Good morning, everyone. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. It is Friday for me, and it's a beautiful day. I'm thankful that I'm alive, guys, that I have a mind, and I can talk, I can see, I can drive. I know the direction that I'm going in. I'm not forgetting. I'm thankful for everything. God is so good. I have clothes, changes of clothes. These little things, while it may seem minute, guys, it is truly, um, it is truly a blessing, you know, and it's good to give thanks for the little things. Because when you don't have it, that's when you're like, oh my gosh, I had it good. <laughs> so, as you can see from my title, there's a couple things I want to talk about. And it is, you know, giving. You're not obligated to give. Okay? You're not obligated to give anybody anything however you can be led by the Lord to give and there's a difference when you're led by God when God impresses it upon you when God shows you a need he will touch your heart he will lead your heart in how to give but you're not obligated you have to give or else that's not even how the Lord gets down, okay? If you read throughout the Bible, I always tell people, read your Bible page by page, because if you read it page by page and in order, just take your time and read it, you're going to see that a lot of scriptures that people have used to manipulate you, scare you, was not what it was saying, because you're going to see the bigger picture. You also see the bigger picture of who God is and his character. So, these intimidation tactics that people will use, whether it's in the church, whether it's leaders, or just you not knowing better, just giving away your money and giving away your stuff and enabling people who just want to be lazy, who don't want to try, abusing your generosity, you have a mandate, really, to study the Word of God. To show yourself approved. Study the word of God. So you know how to rightly divide what's true and what's not. And to discern and understand the scenarios in which God will lead you to give. And when he wants you to refrain your hand. Because sometimes people are given to individuals who they live a life of just getting from people. They don't want to try. They are able to work, they are able to do things, but they find it easier just to get your money. It's easier for them to just live in your house and to get your things. So some of you, you may have had your credit messed up because you gave loans to people. You you uh, you went out and took out loans. They promised to repay it. You have co-signed or bought someone a car and they promised they'll take care of the payments and they didn't or all they had to take care of was the insurance and they didn't do that you may have allowed them to live in one of your properties and even leased it to them like you cut the price down all the way you can even have where all they paying is a hundred dollars a month and they still can't pay you that this is just an example and it's always about them. It's always about them and how hard things are. So when you are calling them to the carpet to say, hey, you know, you didn't make this payment. What's going on? They are going to tell you, you knew that this is what they had going on. So despite you helping them, they're not paying back that loan. So you're in debt. They're not making their car payment. Like they said they would. So you're making your car payment or your children's car payment or whatever and their car payment. You're trying to, you have your property that you could have leased out to people who will pay you 
and you have these individuals that's living there damaging it damaging the property not paying not doing what they should do but you did that because you thought that's the christian thing to do sometimes you allow the church to tell you to hire somebody oh they didn't need a job not knowing that this person has jumped from job to job to job to job and this is where your discernment has to kick in you're not obligated to do something just because you're a christian that's not how it works now i'm not telling you that you should be selfish and unkind and overlook people but you must use god's wisdom because sometimes you're simply aiding and abetting and enabling a person who has a habit of mooching off of people and moochers go to church moochers are gonna figure out who they can get over all right so first they come to you they just need forty dollars and give them forty dollars and they realize they got forty dollars next and they come and ask you for forty dollars again and now they need forty five dollars and not asking you to for fifty dollars and then they're asking you for a hundred dollars and it goes on and on and on because they take it and because they're not earning money they're not working for a living they don't value money they don't have the value of it they won't spend it because they know they can come back to you for it so i met people like this a lot that they have a story of how bad their life is and how bad things are for them and then you're there helping them and they become a, they become your problem so it's very important that you are using discretion and God's wisdom before you just open up your wallet before you just open up your 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 checkbook before you open up your home before you just go and co-sign on things for people because truly we gonna we're gonna answer to God for these choices because God blesses us with an increase but you have to use wisdom and you may not even have that much of an increase you may just have an extra you may have a, a, a extra pack of hot dogs you know and somebody needs help but sometimes because we're not using wisdom you will give that to somebody who spend and squander their money versus someone who is really trying doesn't have it and needs it so a lot of times we end up investing in the counterfeits or the individuals that's come to eat up basically we are we can be financing and taking care of the canker worm and the pommel worm that the bible talks about that comes to devour things so god may have blessed you with extra that you could help somebody but because you you know someone that truly needs it but because you're not discerning and you just feel like oh well i'm obligated to do this you would be feeding the canker worm and the pommel worm you're feeding the moth and so they keep they just immediately get rid of that they just they consume the money and come back for more you you open your property to them like the palmer worm the canker worm the moth they're going to corrupt mess up your property and not pay you they're going to fall back on payments and and argue with you you can let them come and stay in your house and they just there can't keep that one space clean and be a problem in your household they move from that victim mode to now becoming entitled like you should do this there are people that literally live for your cash your earnings and tell you you they basically you can help me you work you make more money than me and that's their mindset you can give it to me you give them a hundred
hundred dollars. They're looking over. You can't give me two hundred. You make six thousand a month. <laughs> You know, I was uh, talking with my daughter the other day and I said, you know, never let people know how much money you make. If you become wealthy, if you become wealthy, people don't need to know you're wealthy. Because when you're wealthy, then people start to ask you for more expensive things. You want to be led in how you should bless people. But they know, when people know that you have a certain amount of money, if you buy them a $200,000 house and they know you're a millionaire, they're going to wonder why you didn't get them a house or the pool. These are some people. When you get wealthy, people don't ask for regular things anymore. They're not, you know, you buy them a, a nice little lamp for their birthday. They want to know why you didn't buy them, uh, you know, a couch, a, a, a suite. They want to know why, you know, a living room suite. They, they want to know why I didn't buy them something bigger. <laughs> you get wealthy, you just give a small donation to the church. They want you to buy a church charter bus. This is what can happen in the heart of someone who is greedy and who has, who is basically as I said moth and canker worms will drain you and so it's important guys that you have discretion when you're in the church don't let them use scripture to manipulate you out of your money I you know there are a lot of churches that talk about wealth 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 and money 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 but they're wanting you to give them your money and make it see it's God's money if it's God's money yes it's God's money it's not your money Meaning, when that pastor and those leaders are telling you it's God's money, yes, it's God's money, not your money. You don't tell me what I do with God's money. God gave me money for me, for me to be the steward over my finances. And God is going to lead me in who to bless. But you are not going to bully me and intimidate me and get my money because that is not the nature of the Father. Guys, you need to understand the truth about tithing and offering. It is important that you read your Bible and study it. All of the Mosaic laws are in the past, except for that one. And we're there to tell you that if you do not tithe, you're going to go to hell. Not even Jesus preached on anything like that. But nevertheless, this message is not on that. I'm not saying that you cannot give to the ministry and I can I'm not saying you can't give to a cause because those lights are not paying for itself. But sometimes many of these preachers and pastors they put themselves in debt. They built a sanctuary and got this great big stadium in these places that the Lord never told them to get. He was going to give them something where it was manageable. Or maybe he tells them to do that and they need to trust him. But they don't. They get afraid. But more often than not, you are we are financing the dreams of man. That's what it is. They bite off more than they can chew and they get desperate. So they get into the house of God and start to beat you down with the word and tell you God's going to kill you because that mortgage is due. They want to tell you you are cursed with a curse. Because they want to put a down payment on that Rolls Royce or make that first payment. They want to pay for cash with your money so they don't have payment, but they won't give you anything. They'll tell you to have faith. It is very rare that you see pastors or these ministries giving to people. And sometimes when it looks like it's they're giving, they're not really giving. It's not their money. They're giving what somebody else donated. But they are going to talk to you and make you feel like you have to. I don't have to give you anything. You need to understand that. You don't have to give them anything. When you're led by God, God will, God will uh, place it on your heart how much to give, 
how much to donate. You are not obligated to take 10% of your income and your finances every month to tithe. That is not the way it works. Please watch my videos on the truth about tithe. I made at least two of them. The way they did it back in the, Moses, the days of Moses and the way they're doing it now in the church, it is highly perverted and that is not the way God had people given tithes. Tithing was for the Levites. The reason why they had Levites, the Levites were, God did not have them working and doing other things because they had to see about the things of the house of God. So in order for, to supplement for that, the Lord instructed all the children of Israel to give a portion of their finances to, uh, I'm sorry, a portion of their livestock and their produce 10%, I don't even think it was 10%, but it was a, might have been a 10, but they would give a portion. Everybody will donate so that they had food. So first off, it was never money. It wasn't shekels that they were required to give to them. It was food and livestock, okay? And guess what? Every three years, they would take all their food and livestock, the tithes, they will take that and they'll put it within the city gates so that the widows, the fatherless, and the foreigners can come and take to their heart's content. That's every three years, I believe, that was supposed to be done. So tithing was never money. Only one time was the tithes turned to money and it was in the scripture where the Lord says, um, they were to eat their tithes. The, the people that earned and worked hard, the Lord said to eat your tithes. I want you to take you to a place where you eat your tithes. I was shocked when I saw that in there. Google that. And so the Lord had a designated place that they were supposed to go and to enjoy their, the fruits of their labor along with their servants and their family. And they included the priests in that. And they would go together. It wasn't that the priest took all of that. So they would go to this place. And the Lord says, if it's too far of a distance and it's too much for you to carry all your tithe, meaning the livestock and all their produce, if it was too far or if it was too much, then the Lord told them to exchange their tithes, okay, for money. And once they get that money, they will now go to that designated place where the Lord has has um, the Lord has set up for them to go to enjoy their blessings, and so they can go and buy to their heart's content. That's what the word says, and they go and en and enjoy themselves. And they say, "Don't forget the Levites, don't forget the widows." But you go and you enjoy. Where is the church teaching you today to enjoy your money? They're not going to tell you that. They tell you, give it to me, give it to me. And you're wondering why you're broke. You're wondering why you're getting ashy while they are thriving. You're wondering why they look good. It's not because God is blessing them. You are you are all giving them their money. If someone turned around and gave you the same thing, just gave you money, you're going to change as well. But my whole point is they will tell you, you have to and you got to. And this is what's going to happen to you. And they're going to threaten you. And they're going to tell you how you how you are supposed to steward your money. But that is not of God. They will tell you that you need to give to them. And what's going to happen to you if, if you don't give to them? They're going to tell you that whole story. But ironically enough, very rarely is there any teaching of them giving to the ministry. They will say, well, I'm giving my time of my time and my talent. Well, so is everybody else. Individuals are getting up every Sunday, giving up their time, giving up their talents for free, providing media and, and graphics and all of that. And they're singing in their voice for free, buying the clothing that's necessary, the uniforms or the outfits that needs to match the praise team for free you're not getting reimbursed for that 
you can't keep those receipts and get some uh to get uh, some tax write-offs later or whatever or to get it back people do that with their tithes but my brothers and sisters you're investing too but they don't make it seem as if they're doing so much more because they're preaching and and they're no you they're getting a whole lot more they get a lot of privileges I'm not saying that it's not tough work, but these individuals that are con artists, they are just there to, they are simply there to suck you dry of God's blessings. And they're going to, they're going to pervert the word of God to bring fear into your heart. And you are not obligated, you are not obligated to give them anything God will direct you in what to do and who to bless and to what capacity God is going to make sure that you have food on your table and in your household a part of your stewardship is to be able to take care of yourself and your family not giving away what you have earned when God blesses you with a job I'm sorry for all that bumping I'm in a, this area I don't know why they don't fix this road um when God blesses you financially, you're supposed to be a good steward of that. And he will show you how to bless, how to be a blessing to someone, who to give to, and then you're going to get your increase. But what's happening is they're telling you you're obligated to give it to this specific person, this specific ministry. If you sow in this ministry, then you're going to be blessed. And if you don't do this, then this is going to happen to you. And that is not of God. God's not going to threaten you. He's not going to use fear tactics for you to give. And it is not true that you have to be giving everybody your money. How are they going to get their money? They need to have faith as well. Some of them need to get a job. Nobody told them to do ministry full time. Some of them. And then God is going to lay it on the congregation's heart. And what to do and how to bless. You understand that? And still take care of your home. And still look good. And some of them guys need to downsize. Because they have went out there and got worldly goods. That they cannot maintain. Many of them are trying to live the lifestyles of the rich and famous. And so they begin to whip you over the back like some horses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whooping you to carry that weight. Uh uh. I'm sorry, I am not financing them Versace tops you want to wear. Now, don't get me wrong. People can look good. If they want to buy a Versace top, then you buy it. But don't sit here and tell me that, you you know, a lot of times, guys, people need to downsize. They have this taste. I have kingdom taste. I have kingdom taste. Well, you know, a good king doesn't sit around and have everybody being poor around them while they're living a lavish life. So this kingdom living at the expense of the poor is not of God. It does not come from him. God was washing the feet. He came plain. The Lord could have came decked out and bedazzled. He could have been bedazzled. But he was not. He was not. And he came for a reason. He came in an unassuming form for a reason. Because he knew and he knows that there are people that will be trying to convince people. Give me your money. Give me your finances. Give me your stuff. And guys, we have to study the word of God. We have to study the word of God so that we are not fooled. That you're not in a place where people are bullying you. 
and forcing you and telling you, you have to do this. You don't have to do anything. It's not good to be selfish. It's not good to be where you see someone in need and you you say, God bless you. I, I, you know, I believe you will eat today and walk by them. But you have to have discernment because I've been there. I've done that. I'm sure some of you have done that. Went out and helped somebody and did all this stuff. And guys, you was helping the canker worm. You were helping the palmer worm. You were financing the moth. And what we do, why it's serious, why you have to have discernment is because you will take what God has given you, give it to someone who is like putting coins in a bag with holes. And what happens is that blessing is wasted and squandered on the wrong person. So someone who's truly in need, they're still hungry. They're still thirsty. They're still, uh, they, they're not being helped. They're still in a bad place where God blessed you and had you just used enough discernment, he would have eventually led you to this person who is truly the one that is in need. I need to adjust my parking. You understand what I mean? There's so much more to it. It's not a matter of like, oh, well, no, somebody is lacking still. What you wasted, what we have wasted in the past on certain people. It was supposed to be for this other person. That you would have met eventually and you would have used discernment. You have to be very careful who you're going to give to. Because it's yes, it's that serious. God provides for us. He gives to us. He he has Open up the windows of heaven and put it in your heart where you can get double. You got two of stuff, you know, and double. You have a major, a, a significant increase where you can help somebody. You can help someone pay a bill or, or something like that. You can buy school supplies. You want to be led by God where to go you don't want to be financing the palmer worm and the canker worm you don't want to be helping people that when they see that you have some money now they target you and kill you you don't want to open up your home to somebody that they come in and see all you have and they they set up a a burglary because they know your schedule and you don't want to be in churches where you are you are sowing in 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 sowing in uh what's the word dry ground because all you're doing is paying for their lavish lifestyle they want to have this you know k-pop ministry they want to be able to have the the best band and the the best clothes and I, i want my church to have blue lights going all along the floor i want this 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 because they are coveting and they are imitating and they trying to outshine the next person with your money telling you you need to do this but they never need to do anything oh well i am i am the star of the show i'm i'm my time and my effort everybody's given time and effort cuz sure if nobody showed up to church they wouldn't have anything to do so your time and your attendance is there is is uh it's, it's significant and it counts for something. It's too often that people are minimizing themselves and elevating someone when the only person that should be elevated is God. The ele- only person that should be elevated is Christ. Allow yourself to be led by the spirit of God. Let him show you the truth. Let him show you the way, the truth and the light. Let him open your eyes so that when you are blessing you're really helping people. <clears throat> you are, excuse me, you are answering prayers. Someone is praying and God will lead you to them to be able to help them and assist them. And you won't be helping the dirty, rotten scoundrels of the world. There's a movie I saw a long time ago with Steve Martin in it. I forgot the name of the other guy. 
Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. That movie was hilarious. I think it had some language in it now that I think back on it, but the time, you know. But just finding ways to get over and that's what the whole thing was about and you have some dirty rotten scoundrels working living in this world it's amazing to me how people will sit in a call center a call center quote unquote call center that's dedicated to scamming you out of your money because you hear the background everybody else talking the effort that's placed into the perfect lie, the perfect sob story, the efforts that's taken to people getting up every day, putting on dirty clothes, standing on the corner with a sign, and they're, they are, they have a home, but they just want your money. The effort people make to enter into the house of God with a lie because they know, well, church people are not smart. I just need to cry and they're going to give me money. There are people who God has blessed them and they squandered their blessings. People who God has blessed them and they continue to spend, spend, spend. They didn't care. People who God has blessed and they walked in disobedience and did what they wanted to do. And now, and they had a, a nice, they had individuals that wanted to help them and was looking out for them at some point in their lives. And they took advantage of these people. And people don't realize this person that you see going from place to place and is not doing well in life is because they spend their lives conning people. So those dirty, rotten scoundrels that walk through life being led by unclean spirits of lying and deceiving and playing on people's emotions and taking from people if we're not careful we'll just be giving 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 and there's somebody else who truly has a need and they don't get their blessing now god's going to look out for them but you were right there and you could have given to that person taken from your own household taken from your children because the pastor told you to give up your, uh, the pastor told you that you needed to, to go into your savings account and give them whatever. Now your mortgage is doing all this stuff is doing. They tell you have faith and maybe you should have given more money and blame you when you gave them your money. Dirty rotten scoundrels are in the church too preaching and teaching put in their muddy little claws in the bible and manipulating you through the word of god so no you are not obligated to do anything our only obligation is to the lord our only obligation is to god to follow him to let him lead us and let him guide us into all truth I need to open this window Get out. And he's going to lead you and he's going to guide you. And he's going to show you who you can bless. And when you bless, he's going to give you the increase. He can increase you by blessing the person on the corner. He can increase you by blessing somebody by helping them to pay for their application on their apartment. He can to, to apply for an apartment. He can bless you by he's going to lead you guys. He, I'm telling you, you pray and say, Lord, lead me and show me who I can help. Because, guys, sometimes you could be helping and leading people. I'm sorry, you're trying to bless people and they just target you. I've had that happen to me. An individual came to me, needed some financial assistance for this cause. I, 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 I gave because, you know, I have a heart for people and everything. And then the person started, you know, calling me and Hey, I mean, shortly after this, this donation, Oh, I need more. And this is what's going on and blah, blah, blah. And can you, you know, do you know any friends? Do you know anybody? I mean, really being aggressive. And I had to, not too long ago, as a person eventually found me 
on you know on I guess this saw my video on YouTube reached out to me with the same thing the same aggressive approach and I had to correct them And guys, when God wants us to do anything for a cause, you don't have to badger people. You don't have to be, oh, I need more. I need more. Uh Uh-uh. And it just did not sit right with me because it was not long after I had donated that the person was back. I would say maybe two weeks later. And I realized Nah, this is not right. And I created distance. And I guess as my video is going around, the person saw my video, got to my channel, was on for a while saying, yeah, oh, great. And eventually reached out to me with the same thing. And this time... I had to just let the person know straight up once and for all. And guys, that does not make me less of a Christian. But if you don't have discernment and if you don't understand that I'm not obligated to just give you something because you're asking and because you say you're a Christian and because you say I can discern the spirit in which this request is being made. And I have a right and you have a right to go to God and pray to God and let him let him lead you because it's very important. Why? Because if you sow in the wrong ground and you give to the wrong person, it means there's someone who truly needed it that still is lacking. And it means we would have wasted and we would have misused the blessings bestowed onto us. Which is poor stewardship. So I hope this video, even though it was extended, has um, blessed you. I hope it makes some things clear to you. And the only thing I can tell you is pray and ask God to give you wisdom and to guide you. And he will do that. And you'll make better choices. Alright guys, God bless.